What if I told you that we are not at the top tier of the animal kingdom? What if I told you that all of this DNA junk and metabolic processes like glycolysis is not a product of natural evolution? This tree of life right here, well, maybe it's not a tree, but more of a tree house. And in this tree house represents a higher order species that has traveled along this bridge and conjured humans to work as slaves. And does this sound too cool to be true? Perhaps, but not to the ancient Sumerians, the OG civilization. In many first world countries, when people think of ancient civilizations, their minds often jump to the grandeur of Egypt or Rome. But here's the thing, they're not the oldest game in town by a mile. Before the Egyptians raised their pyramids, before Rome embellished its marble arches around the sleek gurgling waters of the Tiber River, there were the Sumerians. They opened their history books, not to blank pages, but to tales of their own heroes, their own battles. Just like us, they were captivated by their past. They were the first of hundreds, pioneering the concept of city-states, establishing the first urban centers like Ur, Uruk and Eridu, the first will, the first legal code, the first schools, the ziggurat, massive temple complexes and defensive walls. And one of the most important things was the fact that they invented the cuneiform writing system, one of the earliest forms. Over the years, we have collected thousands of these cuneiform tablets. These tablets, dating back to the 3rd millennium BCE, were uncovered in various archaeological sites across Mesopotamia. Their inscriptions on these tablets reveal much about the Sumerian religion and mythology, including the stories of the Anunnaki, with these creatures having humanoid figures and human personalities. The original name was this and this and a lot of other ones as well. The term has this general meaning of those of princely blood, royal offspring. So we really see that the Anunnaki were a vital part of the identity of these ancient Sumerian people. And in fact, it was so significant that these stories and gods were adopted by subsequent civilizations such as the Akkadians, the Assyrians and the Babylonians. So why were they so significant? This is what they believed. In a time when Earth was still young and wild. The Anunnaki, a race of celestial beings from a distant dying planet Nibiru, descended from the stars. Their mission was desperate. They needed gold, a rare metal with the power to save their failing atmosphere. Earth, rich with this precious resource, often hope, yet mining the gold proved arduous even for these mighty beings. Enki, the wise and cunning leader, proposed a daring solution to create a new race that could bear the burden of this labor. His brother, Enil, stern and cautious, reluctantly agreed. With the help of Ninhursag, the goddess of creation, Enki combined their divine essence with the primitive hominoids of Earth, crafting the first humans, Adamu. These new beings were designed to serve, to slay, to mine gold and obey their creators. But Enki, who grew fond of his creation, secretly gifted them with curiosity and intellect, sparking a hidden potential within them. As humans multiplied and became even more self-aware, some among the Anunnaki began to fear what they had unleashed. Would these beings, once content to serve, one day rise against their creators? Others, however, saw something in humanity, a reflection of something greater, a potential for wisdom, creativity and power even the Anunnaki had not foreseen. Thus, the seeds of humanity's dual nature were sown. A key cat to serve and a lion, an insatiable thirst for knowledge and freedom. Hi parents, not any specific one once told me, I look at you and I expect nothing. I am continually disappointed. Well, no more, cause the Anunnaki watched from the shadows as their creation began to carve out its own destiny, fight their own wars and experiment in different ways. Like I said before, they played an even bigger role in later stories like the Akkadian epic of Atrahasis, dating back to the 18th century BCE. One of the most vivid accounts of humanity's relationship with these divine creatures, the epic of Atrahasis, 
tells the story of a time when the world was again ruled by powerful gods, with the Anunnaki serving as these divine beings, responsible for the administration of celestial bodies including Earth. The Anunnaki were above dealing with day-to-day -day earthly mortal tasks. Instead, they delegated the task to lesser gods known as the Ajiji. The tale begins with the Ajiji laboring tirelessly to maintain the earth, digging canals, cultivating the land. Over time, these lesser gods, they grew weary, retired and rebelled. The Anunnaki, realizing that, hmm, maybe these workers need rights, social security and maybe unions. What's another option? Just create new workers. Thus, humans were born. Humans were to be fashioned from clay, mixed with the flesh and blood of a sacrificed god to serve as laborers. The best thing about humans? They're weak, but they have high endurance and they don't complain. This complex story of the gods is of no coincidence, very similar to the Sumerian story of creation. And this story was composed of three tablets. In the last tablet, it talks about how the Anunnaki and Lil grew tired of the humans who were constantly being noisy. And being the very reasonable person that he was, decided to create a great flood to wipe out all of humanity. That ought to shut them up. Hey, doesn't this sound familiar? Yes, sir. In the famous epic of Gilgamesh, where there too was a flood. And of course, this was very similar to the great flood in Genesis. Genesis 9.13 I do set my bow in the clouds. It shall be seen in the cloud, and it shall be a token of the covenant. And I will remember my covenant, that the waters shall no more become a flood. It's worth mentioning in 1924, archaeologist Walter Rosinski discovered a hieroglyphic inscription on the wall of the temple in the ancient Egyptian city of Abydos. The inscription tells the story of a great flood that destroyed Egypt. According to the inscription, the god Oresus warned the Egyptian king of the coming flood and instructed him to build a boat to save himself, his family and the animals. But despite all these stories, can they just be myths stolen from previous generations? Like people plagiarizing off someone else. And just looking at the tablets themselves, one of the most controversial seals ever dubbed VA243 depicted, according to many, 12 planets within our solar system with the sun at the center. However, some researchers such as Michael S. Hesse states that the symbols depicted on the cylinder seal is not a sun, but some other ordinary star. And Hesse further argues in his paper, we have in fact full below an astronomical tablets with Sumerian star names. Yet it is these very tablets that inform us that the Sumerians only knew of five planets. However, even if this is the case, why is the center celestial body so much bigger than the ones surrounding it and consisting of rays on its edges compared to the surrounding bodies. While Pythagoras is often credited with the famous theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared, ancient Babylonians had already discovered the principle a thousand years before him. Tablet IM67118 demonstrates the use of the Pythagorean theorem to solve the length of a diagonal inside a rectangle. Another tablet from around the same time reveals that these early mathematicians understood advanced concepts including the calculation of the diagonal of a square and high advanced college level math like the quadratic formula. Wow! This evidence shows that the Babylonians grasped these mathematical principles long before Pythagoras was born. And so the Sumerians were accounted to be the first in many races. And so this raises the question, is this all a coincidence? I mean, there has to be a first for everything, right? Or some suggest it could be a transfer of knowledge from a higher being. The Sumerians themselves thought it came from the Anunnaki, who were pretty much Thanos Bronze Age edition. They had the ability to pose as mortal chieftains, but were able to shape shift into human form. The Anunnaki themselves resided in Celestial Dilmun, 
a pocket dimension adjacent to Earth, so they could supposedly travel between dimensions and manipulate alternate realms. And your grandfather is always talking about, oh, the good old days where we didn't have phones, we talked, you know, face to face, and and we had durable products, we had durable clothes, and <laughs> we could buy a house. Oh, the audacity! Or back in the real good old days, we had spaceships, navigation beacons, and stargates. Take that, grandpa.